Am I serious? Can you really see tornado events 10 days out? As it turns out, in really rare cases, you can. Weather model predictions this far out can occasionally loosely predict the primary ingredients required to make a textbook tornado outbreak or outbreak sequence. In March 21 and 22, 2022 was one of those rare cases. And this isn't a case of warm, moist air meets cool, dry air. The canned explanation you hear constantly on TV to explain why tornadoes form in the United States. But that's too simplistic. That could describe any weather event in the temperate zones across the entire planet and in every season. Instead, we need to look at what really makes a tornado event evident well in advance and what the real reasons are that cause tornado outbreak events to occur. It all begins with the previous system moving out of the eastern U.S., allowing a gentle return flow of Caribbean and Gulf moisture northward. Next, if a large trough were to dig in over the center of the country, passing over the Rocky Mountains and spilling over the plains, several very important things begin to happen. A surface low pressure will form just off the Rocky Mountains. The low pressure creates cyclonic flow, or anti-clockwise motion at the surface, accelerating this moisture return onto the plains and leading to instability that could produce thunderstorms. The strong mid-level winds from the jet allow for storms to form that don't rain on their own updrafts, a process called venting, sending precipitation ahead and away from the storm's updraft. The combination of upper-level flow along with this cyclonic motion at the surface means that winds change direction with height. In addition, this causes a dry line to form, a sudden change in humidity at the surface that begins to tighten into a focused boundary where storms can fire up. As far back as March 11, 2022, models began to clue in this classic configuration for cantankerous convection in central Texas. The final ingredient required to turn a typical severe weather threat into a nearly textbook tornado outbreak is the presence of the low-level jet. Because mid-level air temperatures drop faster in the higher and drier western U.S. than in the eastern U.S., this causes a late afternoon response in the middle atmosphere, a noticeable increase in the winds just above the ground. This process began the night before, further enhancing moisture transport onto the plains, but also it enlarges the wind profiles we would see in photographs just before sunset. Once storms have formed, tornadoes become the most likely to occur late in the day and into the overnight because of this low-level jet. On a small mountain in Llano, Texas, where I stayed the night before, I was socked in with wind and misty low clouds. A textbook example of the low-level jet doing its job in this case. All of that is to say is that storms on March 21 are going to want to rotate intensely, meaning large hail and tornadoes are practically a guaranteed outcome, considering all other ingredients in this supercell recipe are now well established. Tornado evident events are fun to forecast because you can make a lot of really specific takes on a Discord server and accidentally look pretty smart later on. In all honesty, it's just the atmosphere doing what it does and being cautiously optimistic in a good chase day a long way from home. But for chasers, spotters, weather watchers, we need to get into the details next. Let's look at the 500 millibar layer winds map for a moment and I'll draw the approximate location where the dry line will be. As a chaser, I'm looking for photogenic tornadoes on discrete supercell thunderstorms. 500 millibar winds are a pretty decent indication of storm motion and speed. Not alone, but enough to visualize where I want to go. To the north, winds are south to north, indicating to me that quasi-linear storm complexes will be the dominant mode near Dallas. This will be good enough for tornadoes, but not chaser friendly. To the south, across the Austin and San Antonio area, our winds running about 45 degrees compared to the dry line. This is the best chance for discrete photogenic supercells. I'm calling for four to five cells to form in this area. I'm favoring the right exit region of the polar jet, where the best mix of rising air, storm steering, and mode should be the most favorable. My gut instinct today is that all storms that form down here will be capable of producing tornadoes, but I'm most interested in ones that form more to the north. Ample moisture, good storm mode, and closer proximity to the low pressure. Will I be right? Well, let's set up east of Austin, where Spencer and I expect the two northernmost storms to form and see if we're right. I won't pick my nose today, got it. Well, just for right now. <laughs> just don't pick your nose right now, then it'll be fine. Cool. Austin, Texas, uh, at least in the eastern, northeastern suburbs, getting ready for a 15 hatch risk day. 
uh, for Tornadic Supercells to be going through the Austin area potentially, or at least all up and down I-35, maybe from Waco down to San Antonio with discrete supercells and uh, some Q QLCS type tornado producing storms up north and north of Dallas. We don't want those. We want stuff we can see, stuff that's photogenic, and hopefully stuff that doesn't delete Austin. Um, which, uh, unfortunately, when you're bringing tornado producing supercells across I-35, it's just one big city. So chances are something's gonna get messed up. Right now, just moving up the road just a little bit to get a nicer view of the sky to the west, west, southwest. Right now. which is totally uneventful right now. It's 2.49 p.m. It's expecting initiation pretty much any minute and storms to move off to the northeast track through uh, the area east of I-35 and into the evening, possibly past places like College Station. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. If we catch something, we'll catch something. But uh, what a way to start a season. Special sounding from College Station, Texas, which is a little, little bit upstream for us. That is absolutely insane. <laughs> what's, this, what's the uh, thermal profile look like out on that bad boy? 72 over 68. Yeah, really saturated down below. Yeah, and that could be a little bit of a corrupt sounding. It could be. It could be convectively enhanced. Yeah. Okay. But wow. It, it's, uh, yeah, that is... That's a thing. That is something. That is something. It almost has a couple yeah. of times. I can move the truck somewhere else. Yeah, move it, move it back here. You got a much better view here. Right the it's going right now. Hustle. I mean, that road, that road's gonna have some views. It's a little hilly, but it's gonna have some views. Yeah, yeah. and it'll be better than this. It's seven right minutes. Now. Let's let's go now. Let's, yeah, it's not let's go now. Matt, you can do what you want. We're going seven We're minutes. Going now. You gotta go back the direction we came from. Exactly in the direction we came from? Yep. And then we're gonna find a different road and go. And we, we're gonna take the road we were supposed to take. Oh, really? Yep. Okay, I'll blast. Look at that. Here we go. Get big. There it is. Look up, buddy. I know, I know. I'm, I'm making a report. How far away is that? All right, what town are we in? So this is southwest of Elgin. South, southwest of Elgin. San Antonio, Austin. San Antonio, Austin. All right, I'm gonna have to switch to uh, 120 FPS soon, huh? <laughs> You're gonna want to do that yesterday. Yeah, well, I mean, it's so far out. It's not gonna be far out. This ain't going anywhere, dude. Oh, I know. Look at that cut. That's a strong tornado. We got to that viewpoint right on time, man. Sir? Yes! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like tweeting the world and shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. First tornado of the year, and it's a good one. It's a doozy. Storm, you can see the structure for a change. Truck? Yeah, yeah, I was playing back a video. I hope I didn't cuss in that one because that was to my dad. <laughs> Holy sh dude. I don't know if this one's gonna go anywhere anytime soon. This is this is Roselle right here. You'd love to see it.
UPS truck just casually celebrating. It's probably still 10 miles yet. I don't have recent data. I wish I did. I will here in a second. Um, it is currently missing us just to the north on this position. Ten miles. Ten miles. Look at that. Ten miles and missing us. It'll it'll cross right here. Oh my God, it's, so big. it's a big boy. How long has this been down? Fifteen minutes. The, uh, ten. I mean, if it's just going to continue tornadoing, let's I'm just go to let it go. Until we have to. Okay. I don't want to be moving under a mezzo, but. Still a shitload of debris in that thing. Let me, let me look at this. Uh, roads, 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 roads. Where are you? Free shot. We're gonna do it again. Why not? Let's go. It's not. It's, it's gonna not miss us to the north. No, it's, it's, it's not gonna cross. I just want to make sure we have a way out. I think that's a oh yeah, I see debris now. Yeah, actually, you know what? I agree with you. Who me? It's either gonna hit us or go north. It's not gonna hit us. I'm afraid if we leave, we're gonna. This might do a failed occlusion. Yeah. There's a rope out. See a softball, heads up to everybody else. <laughs> It's just gonna pass right in front of us. This shit's gonna cross the road, dude. Like, there's a new tornado in front of us right now. Do you see it? I can't see it now. There's right in front of us. Right here. See where I'm pointing? The RFD is in front of us. There it is. There it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's get up there. Get up there. Come on. Go. 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 Let's fuck. Oh, we have views on the other side. We just have to go. You can see the curtains. Mm -hmm. Watch that that old occlusion doesn't come back. It's yeah, I went. That's that is exactly what I was telling you about earlier. I think it's okay. It's not imminent.
Forget it, dude. Film it. It's yep. off to the left. You gotta be careful, Matt. Okay. Where's that? It's off to the left. It's right here. God, wow. Yes, wow. Okay, get in frame. I'm getting out. Yep. Oh, yeah. might be done after this. It's gonna be real hard to get ahead of this thing again on this road. It is cutting south. Got anything in frame? Yeah, barely. It was out of frame initially. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look at what's in front of us too. What, just a bunch of trees? Yep, let's creep. Okay. Yeah, follow John, he's got, he's got the idea. Windshield. Nice cone. We'll turn the wipers off. Okay, we're still recording. Fantastic. GoPro is still recording. iPhone recording. I've got no fing data. I, I don't either. Yeah, I'm It goes that way. It goes that way. Okay, we're flying east of Elgin, Texas, where we just intercepted a couple of tornadoes, maybe three. Um, it all, this all started as a string of pearls, four supercells, well-defined on uh, Interstate 35, uh, from about Gerald down to San Antonio. We picked the one that I believe is the second one in the row of the four from north to south. That went through Austin, possibly produced a tornado in Austin, and then continued on and produced the three that we saw near Elgin, Texas. So we're all very hyped up having a very good day. This is one hell of a start to a chase season. Spencer, how do you feel right now? Woo! That's what, um, <laughs> there was a woman with her ass out, sing. So I, yeah. You can leave that. None of the cameras were rolling <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> Not that I need any of that, but whatever. It is what it is. Like a, like a, trio, like a real tornado. As predicted, cities along I-35 weren't completely spared some amount of destruction. Here in Round Rock, Texas, initially a weak tornado, producing EF0 and EF1 damage in town, was limited in this area to mostly trees, power lines, and some torn shingles. This tornado would become quite destructive later on, however. Round Rock dodged a bullet. And while we could see this event coming from 10 days away, that isn't normal. Typical severe weather events are usually forecasted within about four days, with an error in location and timing by hours, and even by whole states. But in this case, even a week out, models were calling for this specific area. Perhaps it's a trend we continue to see as numerical models continue to improve all of the time. I hope you've enjoyed, and until the next one, I'll see you out there.